this video, we are going to introduce the basic concept of antiderivative. So what is antiderivative? Antiderivative is you undo the process of derivative. So by so you have made it to antiderivative, that means at this point you must be very familiar with all the differentiation formula. So I have all the differentiation differentiation formula we have discussed in the previous video. So if you don't remember of this or if you are new to my channel, please take a look. Uh, you can take a take a screenshot, take a screenshot, write everything down. All right. So how do you undo the process of derivative? So let me give you a very basic example. So let's say we have f of x equals to x to the third power. This time we are not going to take derivative. So if you take derivative, so that is 3x squared, right? If you take derivative, simple, simple power rule. So this one, what I am asking you to do is I am asking you to find an antiderivative. So this antiderivative, I am going to use capital F of x. So how do you do this? Now we are trying to undo the derivative. So this, follow me. So f of x, so we are not going to bring the power down and then take the power minus 1. We are going to do it backward. I am going to write x first. Listen, I take this power, add 1 to it. And then the coefficient, I have 1 divided by the power I just wrote, 3 plus 1. So this is equals to 1 over 4, x to the 4th power. That is equals to f of x. That is how we do antiderivative. I undo the process of derivative. How do I know this answer is right? Simple. Look at the capital F of x. All you have to do is you take the derivative. So when you take the derivative, you bring the 4 down, and then you have a 4 minus 1 in the exponent. After you bring the 4 down, 1 fourth times 4 is equals to 1, right? So f prime of x, you bring the 4 down, so that is a 4, and then x to the 4 minus 1 is 3, so you get your x to the third back. That is how you check your answer. But when you do antiderivative, find an antiderivative, I want you to do one more thing for me. This is very important. I need you to add c to it. So what is c? c is equals to a constant value. So what is a constant value? So I can have f of x equals to 1 over 4x to the 4th plus 2. So when you take the end, when you take the derivative, you still get x to the third, right? Because the derivative of 2 is equals to 0. So the 2, the 3, the 1,000, the pi, they are called a constant value. Constant value means there is no variable attached to it. And then how about the answer in the box? What is this called? This is called an antiderivative. What about the antiderivative? So what do I mean by the antiderivative? So if you want to find the antiderivative, so here is how we are going to do it. So if you want to find the antiderivative, the antiderivative has another name that is called particular solution. then you have to give me one more condition. So let's say for capital F, when x is equals to 0, y is equals to 1. I am going to use this to find the constant c. So simply plug in 0. So you have f of 0 that equals to 1 over 4, 0 to the 4th power plus c that is equals to 1. So that means I have c equals to 1. So now I can find my particular solution. My particular solution is f of x equals to 1 over 4 x to the 4th plus 1. So this is called the antiderivative. All right. Remember, there is no such thing as the antiderivative of a function as long as you haven't determined what the constant c is. So if you don't know the constant c, the one right here, then I will call this an antiderivative. Now, you have to get a, a a condition f of 0 equals to 1, and then you use this condition to solve for c, then this is called the antiderivative, or you can call that particular solution. Before we move on to, to more example, let's practice a couple more antiderivatives. 
So let's switch color for those. So let's say uh, we have f of x. What if I put a constant in front of the x? Let's say 5x squared. How do you find the antiderivative? So the antiderivative f of x. So here is how we are going to do it. You leave the 5 alone. And then the x, we are not going to bring the 2 down. Instead, bringing the 2 down, I am going to take the 2 plus 1. And then 1 divided by 2 plus 1. So overall, we have 5 divided by 3 x to the third, right? So if you take the derivative of this using simple power rule, you can easily get the 5x squared back. So since this is only an antiderivative, I have to do a plus c. So this is my answer. What about f of x equals to e to the x? So the e to the x, the derivative of e to the x is still e to the x. And then the derivative, the antiderivative, f of x is just e to the x. So you take the derivative of this, you can get the e to the x back, but this is an antiderivative. I need to do a plus c. All right, how about this? f of x equals to cosine x. And then what about the antiderivative? That means the derivative of what is equal to cosine? The answer is the derivative of sine is equal to cosine and then the general solution is you just do a plus c so if you replace the c with a 10 right sine of x plus 10 take the derivative of that the derivative of 10 is equal to zero so you only have a cosine cosine in the derivative so let's do one more two more f of x that is equal to sine of x what about the antiderivative the antiderivative now tell me is this correct cosine of x plus c. Did I get this right? The answer is no. The derivative of cosine is equal to negative sine. Look at the f of x, the lowercase f. There is no negative in front of the sine, right? So that means there is a negative in there. So when you take the uh, derivative of cosine that generates a negative, negative, right? In front of the sine, the negative and the negative becomes a positive. And then one more, f of x is equals to secant square x and then what about this f of x the derivative of what is equals to secant square the answer is tangent x plus c now you, you you might want to ask me hey uh what if i have this so this one let's do it in a, in a different color so let's say we have um f of x equals to um let's make this more interesting let's say we have e to the x squared plus two what about the antiderivative to answer this question this you have to uh we have to discuss the antiderivative in more detail antiderivative so overall the antiderivative this process antiderivative in calculus we call this process from here to here from here to here we call this process, now we use the word antiderivative. There is a word to describe the process. This word is called integration, which is the next branch in calculus that is called integral calculus. What we have done in right now and the previous video, they are called differential calculus. So integration is a huge uh, branch in calculus. So regarding taking the antiderivative of the yellow function e to the x squared plus 2, you have to study more integration techniques. So this one, I will leave this one unanswered at this point because we are not going to get to that deep yet. So in the next video, what we are going to do is I am going to show you how to find the antiderivative, the, how to find an antiderivative of each of the following function. All right, I will see you all in the next video.